you can see that it's a beautiful kill. I got four stack out of it. This is beautiful. And that is just beautiful. What's up, my nerd friends? Today, I want to show you my clear of Shell and Shire, which is this boss right here. And I managed to get the score to 4,870, which is uh, using the Berserk stage. The Berserk stage is the highest rank and the recommend level is actually Ascension Tree level 80 for all your units, but I obviously don't have that. <laughs> no, just kidding. I do have uh, one unit that is level 80, but the rest are not. And I'll show you what my unit is later and what I did differently, which made me not get 5,000 score is this. So the collective will be on 60% health initially. Uh, I feel like the 20% is a little bit too annoying to deal with and I probably could do it. I just need a lot more tries and I don't want to do that. So I just settle with this. This is much, much easier to do. And because I am not using Chandra, which is not the optimal team, but I really don't want to use Chandra in this stage because Chandra is super slow and you have to kill like so many monsters with Chandra. It's gonna drive me insane, dude. Like, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'll show you my team. So this is what my team is. I am using a Breakthrough 3 Requiem, Breakthrough 2 Lukoa, and Breakthrough 4 Brock, Breakthrough 2 Fillashai. And I'm not using Alura, I'm actually using another unit, which is a friend Migard. And it has to be a maximum breakthrough friend, which I don't have a lot. <laughs> I have two only, and I don't know how you, you can find it, but you can try and find it. Ask some whales to add you as friends. I don't know. Uh, basically, that's what I do. And if I can find one, I'll show you, uh, which is this one. It is a maximum breakthrough Megart, and if you have a maximum breakthrough Megart, your active skill cooldown is removed if the target is killed with the skill, but it's limited to once per round. So you cannot just spam it like Chandra, but it is actually good enough for this stage anyway. You definitely need this if you want to use my strategy anyway. And you know, I figure out if I have the whale friend, why don't abuse it, right? So I also want to show you the Requiem. I, my Requiem is Breakthrough Tree. You actually also need this uh, because of this Breakthrough here. When active skill kill one enemy gain to this. So there will be a certain time where there's a lot of enemy on the board and Migard alone is not enough to clear. You will need to use Requiem to kind of clear those mobs and uh, when you clear them you can actually get back your vis by having this breakthrough so it is uh, very very important to have this uh, it's not important to go to the last breakthrough at all in my opinion the ignore defense is nice to have but in a grand scheme of thing it's not very big in terms of damage so yeah ignore this my first shot is on friendly strike but it is not necessary to have friendly strike using my strategy uh, which i'll show you later but yeah, mine is preemptive. And then of course, Brock is preemptive strike. You need this and yeah, it's probably pretty easy. It's a four star. And then my Lukoa is also on preemptive strike. So you need breakthrough two for this. And Lukoa is a limited character. So you cannot get this unit anymore, but any other unit that can do AOE damage and on a relatively low cooldown is fine. I see a lot of people actually using Alura, but Alura is also a limited unit. So, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So yeah, let me show you the fight and I'll explain why I use this instead of Chandra. Uh, number one reason is definitely, I just want to be different. You know, I don't want to be uh, same with existing guides. That's pretty redundant, right? And of course, the number two reason is Chandra is very slow and I really don't want to spam Chandra ability for like an hour or something. It would be just very, very annoying. And this is why I use Maximum Breakthrough Migard. Of course, you do have to find them through your friend list uh, somehow. I don't know. And as you can see here, I am doing pretty well with literally just clearing the first wave pretty easily and gain 3 stack of Migard. Uh, the Migard stack is actually pretty important because at 10 stack, you can pretty much just kill anything on one shot. Uh, uh, at the earlier stack, you actually need to uh, damage the enemy a little bit, which is why I am not using Migard skill right here. I, I got pretty lucky that I have the, what is it, Aurora Tug, which is, uh, you might not have, yeah. 
and as you can see here I tried to sneak in another active skill since it got reset anyway. This is the benefit of using Migart, uh, maximum breakthrough, you can just spam your ability all the time. And there can never be a better showcase than this stage honestly for maximum breakthrough Migart. And let me just tell you, it is on another level, extremely strong. The game plan is of course trying to stack the Migart stack as much as possible and not letting the enemy damage my generator uh, because how Fluttershy healing is like just so efficient you get passive healing every turn and also the shield is ginormous if you have like a lot of enemies you pretty much won't have to worry about dying with Fluttershy on your team as you can see that is a beautiful kill I got four stack out of it just beautiful and of course uh, heal whenever possible healing the generator is much better than using the shield in my opinion because the shield require five cores or something, that's like too much. Usually just much more efficient. And right now, uh, I can actually already use my Requiem to clear the board, but I feel like there's just not enough uh, units and the generator is not in danger. So I decided just use normal attack because why not? And really important is uh, if you're not confident about your Migart, don't use it. Because if you waste your Migart without the reset, it's going to be really, really hard to win. So yeah, good keep in mind on that. Now I have 10 stack. I can pretty much do whatever and it will still reset, but I already used it this turn, so I can't use it again. Uh, yeah, so right now what I'm doing is waiting for the next turn and I will start using my Requiem to clear the board, if I need to anyway. Okay, so I think there's enough enemies here, so I am actually going to use Requiem on this board. If you really want to, you can actually use Migard active skill as well. But uh, ideally, you want to kill both of the boss at the same time. So don't over damage a specific boss too much uh, because there is a mod that curses you when one of them dead. So yeah, ideally kill both at the same time. So right here, I'm debating about or not uh, whether or not I want to use Migard skill and I decided to actually do it just to damage the boss as you can see here that is massive damage as you can see from Migart because it has the core stack as well which uh, I think is 7% per stack so that is already 21% more damage from Migart which is insane uh, I definitely over damage the left boss a little bit but it's fine because we can definitely catch up so yeah as you can see here another beautiful kills and also damage the boss at the same time this is what you want to do. Try to kill monster and damage boss at the same time so you can actually kill the boss, right? So I think this is also the turn I use Requiem. I'm not entirely sure. I think it is. Yeah, it's just enough mob for me to benefit off this. Uh, I was debating whether or not to use uh, B guard here, but I can't really get a good hit. So I decided not to. And that is just beautiful. It, it's it's honestly so beautiful. You can kill all the mobs with a single abilities and gain back all the stacks. It's kind of broken. And I think the breakthrough is definitely worth it. Uh, I used to not understand the Requiem stack, the Requiem breakthrough that much, but now I understand it. It's pretty good, especially on this stage. And yet again, I am using another Migar. And actually he was already in the invulnerable state, so wasn't too useful there, but it's okay. Basically right now I'm kind of guaranteed win. My generator is full health and I have like five stacks of core. I, I don't think I can lose at this point. So yeah, every turn just use Migar and damage the boss. Very, very simple strategy. And unlike Chandra, which probably takes like five minutes per turn, you probably only take like 30 seconds or, or less per turn using Migar, which is why I love this strategy. And it is very much possible to get 5,000 score if I have higher levels and if I have the patience to do it. Uh, because you do need a little bit of RNG. That's what Alchemy Star is, unfortunately. And yes, another Requiem. Just beautiful. And I still have plenty of turns. Definitely e very easy win for me. Also, uh, I just want to say, uh, I don't know if it's just me, but there's a couple of times when I play the game and when I kill like way too much enemy at the same time, my game just disconnect and it's actually very annoying i wish twodog fixed this because when you disconnect you lose all your progress on the stage which can be very annoying on stage like this which takes very long time and even worse if you are using chandra which probably take one hour to do one boss extremely extremely annoying but uh very fortunately i did not get it on this round there was actually one round that I almost won as well, but it disconnected me, which I'll show you here.
very annoying. But yeah, uh, hopefully Toto can fix that. I don't know when or don't know how they fix it. I just wish it got fixed. And right now the shout is on the last health and he's uh, the health lock can damage her but the next round we will use requiem and we should be able to finish all of them at the same time and we still have six round left so yeah this is uh, basically how you beat this boss by not using chandra and still able to achieve almost maximum score if you have more levels i bet you could and also more patient but yeah hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you all in the next video peace